Eric Darling here with <clears throat> Darling Data. And uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about, uh, we're going to continue our <clears throat> amazing lecture and demonstration series on SQL Server Store Procedures. And we're going to start getting into temporary objects. Uh, temporary objects are, of course, a very important design consideration when uh, you are creating and altering or create or altering store procedures, or I guess just altering a store procedure, uh, mostly because I see a lot of people sort of willy-nilly pick between temp tables and uh, table variables. And there are, I'm going to move over so you can't see that annoying Intel thing, uh, but there are a lot of good reasons <clears throat> to, to choose one or the other. Uh, so we're going to split these videos up into a few different parts to sort of examine each one of those uh, a little bit more closely so I don't feel rushed to get through everything all in one and I don't end up with a 60 minute video that people watch three minutes of. So great. Uh, the first thing that we are going to talk about in this one is temporary objects and recompilations. Um, <clears throat> some people might care very much about managing this. Um, there are certain environments and there are certain uh, types of workloads where uh, recompilations uh, can be a sensitivity. Um, I'm not saying that it is yours, uh, but I am saying that it exists for some people. So we're going to talk about a couple way to manage, a couple ways to manage uh, recompilations and store procedures with temp tables and table variables. So I do hope you're prepared. And by the way, I just want to just want to get out of the way that um, I am I am not condoning the uh, either the willy-nilly or the uh, the all the all all encompassing use of table variables because for the most part when you are when you're writing a store procedure and you care about the performance of uh, the the query that puts data into a temporary object modifies the data in the temporary object or then joins that temporary object off to other tables uh, you are really going to prefer temp tables over table variables, uh, recompilation potential be damned. That being said, there are certain high frequency, like high execution count code environments where you may have to manage things a little bit differently. So uh, important distinction to make right up front is the, one of these things is very much not like the other when it comes to performance, but there are certain workload characteristics where you might care about this behavior specifically. All right. So uh, with that out of the way, let's go back into the deck that I didn't mean to exit out of. And let's talk about channel stuff. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's been a long week. Uh, it's not getting any shorter. So uh, if you like my content and you think that I am worth like four May for between four and ten dollars a month or something, uh, you can sign up for a channel membership to say thank you for all these wonderful videos. Um, if you don't have money because you blew it all on lawyers, or casinos, or I don't know, paying back bookies, uh, you can do other stuff to help this channel get bigger and stronger and harder and all sorts of other faster. I don't know, it's all those, all those words from that song. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff there. Uh, if you want to ask me questions privately that I will answer publicly, <clears throat> you can uh, go to this link, um, which uh, is down in the video description along with the, the membership link as well. So you can do both there. And you can ask me a question, and I will answer it on an uh, Office Hours episode. So good, good stuff there. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, if you think that um, I am the, the, the person that could make your SQL Server the dream world that you, you so often find in your, while, while you slumber, uh, I, I am available for consulting. I am a consultant. That's what I do. Uh, I can do all of these things and more. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like to get my training content, you can do that. Again, all the links down in the video description. It's about 150 US dollars with the uh, coupon code there. And you can get all of that training for the rest of your life. Uh, so it's a pretty good bet that you will probably watch some of it before you die. Uh, we still have SQL Saturday New York City coming up. May the 10th, 2025 with a performance tuning precon by Andreas Walter on May the 10th. Uh, it's going to be a good time. 
So you should, you should come if you are the type of person who comes to these sorts of things. But with that out of the way, let's talk about um, temporary objects uh, a little bit generally and then, you know, uh, with the, the point of the video being recompiles. Now, I'll be the first person to admit that uh, I love using temp tables to the point where some people might think he overuses temp tables. Uh, but I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of tempdb. Uh, I just find the um, the flexibility and the immediate gratification of t uh, using temp tables to solve problems uh, far more gratifying than other things. There are of course times when it's good to like rewrite a query just to, to use a temp table just so you can see like like if like if you have a real big query plan and you're just like wow this thing is full of bad choices, and I don't know why SQL Server did any of this stuff. The, sometimes it really just helps to split up parts of that query into temp tables so you can at least get a gauge on like what combination of things drives performance down. Um, maybe something like uh, like some combination of like joins or whatever where clause stuff. Um, sometimes it just helps to troubleshoot like one procedural thing at a time. So really the temp table inserts so serve two purposes. One, to help clarify where the performance problem comes from. And two, to help you tr like troubleshoot like the, the plan as a whole, but in smaller pieces that are a lot easier to manage. So sometimes you might start by do using a bunch of temp tables, then relax that as you like figure out where you like, where, like which one really makes the big difference. So like, if you have a query that does like, you know, four hard things, and you put you separate those four hard things into like temp tables and then you join those four temp tables together like you can get the, you can get the same result back but then you also get the benefit of like figuring out which of those four things like is where your biggest performance problem is and then like maybe you just put that one thing into a temp table and join that off to the other three things right so like there's there's a lot you can do with just like going through the routine of putting stuff into temp tables they can help you at least like figure out performance problems. So even if you don't keep them all and use them all later, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's obviously like a good technique to figure out like where things are going wrong. Um, the other thing is that uh, like sometimes query rewrites involve really weird syntax. Um, like, like, I f like I find myself when I am tuning queries, like, the stuff that I mess with in order to figure out like where I can like meaningfully change the shape of a plan or something like that. Uh, like the, the tricks that you have to play on the optimizer, when a normal person looks at a query that has all these things in them, they would probably freak out. Like they would just be like, I don't know what any of this means. Like, uh, like, how, like how does this help? Like why is this good? Like why is this okay? Like that's like I'm not, I'm not even sure that's valid syntax. What what is going on here? Like even with like a, like a lots of comments in there and like links to things, it's like too much for most people. Whereas like you know just putting stuff in a temp table is like very obvious, straightforward, very understandable, right? Easy, easy, easy street. Um, so there are, there are reasons to use temp tables and whatever just to make life easier uh, than writing incredibly complex queries full of very strange and ornate logic, right? Uh, but we're here to talk about uh, recompilations. And so the, the first thing that I want to show you is um, like sort of like what the different characteristics of recompilations are between temp tables and table variables. And then uh, how you can have temp tables act a little bit more like table variables uh, as far as recompilations go. All right. So first things first, I'm using my store procedure sp underscore human events to track recompiles for the for this session, right? You can see session ID integer equals SPID. I'm tracking my session for recompiles. Uh, the recompile data that I have over here is filtered. Um, uh, I forget how to get, oh yeah, if I think if I click on this, you'll see that I'm filtering to the recompile causes st statistics changed. So the only recompile cause I'm, tra I'm tracking in here is that, right? Like I'm not tracking anything else, that, that's it. Uh, so when statistics don't change, or in the case of table variables, they don't exist to change, nothing will show up here. All right. 
So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna exercise this little bit of knowledge first. And we have a procedure called table variable rows where we are going to, in a loop of 20,000 executions, execute, uh, insert a couple, in, insert rows into a table variable and then do a select query from that table variable. Part of this code is from a very old blog series written by um, this uh, team that used to work, uh, well, the SQL Server like application development best practices team that used to like work at Microsoft and blog, but like all good things at Microsoft, they have gone away, uh, including Joe Sack, who is now at Elasticsearch. So uh, RIP Joe. Anyway. Uh, this store procedure, uh, I think I believe I've already done that. When we run this, <clears throat> it is going to execute in that loop. And on every uh, iteration through the loop, it's going to insert uh, a new, new set of values into this T1 table variable, then run this select query. So the select query and like part of the setup for this is of course inspired by that blog post that um, I, will, I will try to find and put a link to um, in here. Uh, well, you know what? I, I know I can find and put a link to it. It's very easy to find if you know where to look, but uh, you, you, you just hope that by the time you click on the link, Microsoft hasn't put that information in a shoebox and buried it in the backyard. So uh, this thing is finished running. It took about 35 seconds. And if you come over here, we're not going to see any events for statistics changing. Why? There are no statistics on table variables. They cannot change because they don't exist. This is a big problem with a, lot, with, a, with a lot of queries that use table variables is they would be highly dependent on what rows are in the table variable for, the, for SQL Server's cost-based optimizer to come up with a good execution plan. Without those statistics, people freak out about statistics on their regular tables every which way. They, I, you should see the, I mean, you do see the questions that I get in office hours about this, how like worried people are about statistics being slightly wrong. It's like, oh my God, my statistics are off by four rows. I'm going to die. But when it comes to, to table variables, they're like, oh, there's no statistics. We'll be fine. Don't worry. It's in memory. Just interesting, interesting crowd. Anyway, uh, so table variables, no statistics, no recompilations. For some people, that might be a very big upside. Right. Other people, it might be a very big downside. But uh, now we're going to look at temp tables. And the first way that we're going to run this is you, you're going to notice a little hint down here that is quoted out, option keep fixed plan. Uh, that means that, that that hint is not in use. And so when we run this, we're going to see... Um, we're going to see recompilation causes for statistics changing, but something interesting is going to happen with them, right? So I'm going to run this, and we're going to come over here and look, and you're going to notice that there's a lot of stuff that happens like almost immediately, like in a short span of time. But then the longer this store procedure runs for, the longer it takes for new things to show up. That's because the bigger your temp tables get, the higher the recompilation threshold is before there's a recompilation. So like when, if you have very small temp tables and you're putting rows in them, right? SQL Server is going to recompile small temp tables more frequently because their recompilation threshold is gonna be lower. Uh, if you put fewer than, like less than or equal to six rows in a temp table, then anytime you put like six rows in there, you're gonna get a recompile. If you put less than 500 rows in there, then like every 500 rows, you're going to get a recompile. If you put like more than 500 rows in there, then it's like 20% of the whatever, however many rows got put in there. So what, 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 we, what we can track with this is that as we put more and more rows into the temp table, it took more and more rows to reach the recompilation threshold. Like you'll see all this stuff happened at 26 and 27 and 29 seconds pretty quickly. But then after 29 seconds, it was like eight seconds. Oh no, so it was two seconds there and then four seconds there and then five seconds there and then eight seconds there and then nine seconds there and then uh, 57 to, that's the next minute and then 13 seconds there. So all of these, the bigger the temp table got, the more those stats, up, the more those uh, statistics updates, the statistics changing on the temp table spread out, right? So like the bigger it got, the harder it was to reach that recompilation threshold. Now, I'm going to leave this here 
and I'm going to highlight the last row, right? I'm going to leave this highlighted so this thing is blue. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to unquote our hint, option keep fixed plan. I'm going to create or alter my store procedure. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to re-execute this. And what we should see is no new rows enter this. No new rows should come into this session because option keep fixed plan says like, unless like the definition of the temp table changes, we're not recompiling anything. So that's, that can be a really powerful hint for reducing recompilations when you're using temp tables and maybe you want the recompilations to act a little bit more like temp tables. The thing is, keep fixed plan does kind of exactly what it sounds like. Whatever plan we get, we keep and we don't recompile that plan based on statistical changes. That might not be great because now you're kind of in temp table territory where it's just like, like sure you use this like sure the temp table still gets statistics but it gets the statistics from that first execution and it just reuses it and reuses it and reuses it and reuses it the query over the query that we were running over here in the temporary objects pane is finished now right that's all done we didn't get a single new we didn't get a single recompilation with option keep fix plan in there was the plan good was the plan bad was the plan ugly i don't know this, that thing runs in a loop of 20,000. I'm not getting query plans for that. <laughs> we're just not going to, we're just not going to go, go into that. I could, my SSMS would burn my computer down if I was trying to capture plans like that. So, uh, like just make sure you under, sort of understand the trade-offs here. Table variables, even if you index them, no statistics. So if you're joining that table variable off to big tables and like, like even SQL, even the table variable deferred compilation feature, only tells you how many rows are in the table variable. It does not tell you what rows are in the table variable. So while you may get, like table level cardinality may get you some improvement, the lack of statistics on table variables, even with an index, is probably gonna hurt you. Like, like it's, it's probably gonna lead to a bad plan choice at some point. Temp tables don't have that problem. Temp tables get statistics on them, and without an option keep fix plan hint, SQL Server will fairly frequently uh, recompile your execution plans based on those statistics changing. With the option keep fix plan hint, right, you don't get plan changes be when statistics change. So you better hope that whatever plan you get is a good one, right? Because <laughs> if you're going to keep that fixed plan, you better hope, like you're in table variable territory, you better hope that's a good plan or else performance is going to be awful. So uh, if you need to control store procedure recompilations for whatever reason, uh, and you're using temporary objects. One way of addressing that, table variables, right? Because they don't get statistics on them, even if you index them. And table variable deferred compilation does not give you statistics. It just gives you table cardinality. That might be one way of addressing it. You just have to be very careful with performance problems because the table variables don't get statistics on them. Uh, if you need, if you want to keep using temp tables and maybe get like the benefit of some statistics, but reduce recompilations, you can use the option keep fix plan hint. But again, uh, you better hope that whatever plan you get is a good one. This might require query hints. This might require some exotic syntax in order to make sure that the plan that you get is reasonably good, regardless of the statistics generated on there. Uh, but you know that is that is far too. There are far too many local factors for me to dictate a single best practice to you in there, in, with regards to that. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video about temporary objects. We'll, we we will talk about how temporary objects can affect the plan cache. So that'll be a grand old time for everyone. Anyway, thank you for watching.